Welcome to this podcast from the Human Capital Institute's Develop a Leadership Sourcing Model. This webcast is sponsored by The Ladders. Many companies start recruiting from scratch each time a key leadership role is created or vacated. The approach is both time consuming and flawed. So how will your organization find future executives and leaders? Listen to Lou Adler, founder of the Adler Group. As he says, creating and engaging a leadership talent community will not only save you time and improve candidate experience, but it will help reduce costs. So develop a thoughtful and strategic leadership sourcing model to ensure candidate flow before a position is even available. Uh, and I want to actually kind of, this will be applicable to whether you're hiring someone in a call center, engineers, executives. So what I'm about to say now uh, is relevant to all positions. But I'm going to contend that if you take the people whom you've hired and even the people whom you will hire this next year, and if you take a good sample of them, 100, 200, 500, depending on how many you've hired, uh, break them out into, into groups, five big groups. Group A is the huge the mistakes, the ones you shouldn't have hired. It's probably less than 1 in 20, 5 percent. Hey, I, we just shouldn't have hired a person. We're going to fire them. The person's going to leave, whatever it is. It's just a, a mistake. On the other end of the superstars, these are the, the world-class people. They'll get promoted two or three times. Uh, they develop great products. They're great marketeers. Whatever it is, they're, they're just world-class people. Uh, then you got the other 90 percent. And the other 90 percent might actually be fully qualified. So let's just break this into thirds. The top third of those that outperform everybody else, they get promoted, they're reliable, they're consistent, they get the job done. The bottom third could be equally as qualified in terms of academics, experience, uh, and technical ability, but they don't, might not want to do the work. They might not fit with your company. They might not work well with the manager. They might not want to uh, be motivated. They have to be pushed to become average. They might not be very timely. They might not be very consistent. When you start looking at the process, and these could be all fully qualified people, I'm going to contend you have to focus on the top third of the fully qualified people. There is a huge financial impact when you do that. Uh, Here's just something, and I could ask you, if, we, if this was real time to go back and forth, I'd say, hey, tell me what the difference between the top third and the bottom third is. For a 100K person, they set the business strategy. They build teams. They execute better. They could be equally qualified. Whatever it may be, they do different things. Um, so now, how do you, and I'm going to say, I, agree, I believe that to be true. I believe post, job postings can actually work if you write the messaging to appeal to the top third. If you just write a boring ad, I guarantee you're going to get the bottom third. And you, if you've seen a lot of the writings I've done on my blog and the recruiter's wall, you know I'm really focusing on most companies set themselves up to hire the bottom half of the bottom third. Boring postings, can't find them, make people apply. They can't talk to a hiring manager without doing something, do something registering or something. Uh, and my contention is, hey, if you want to raise the, the bar, hiring the top third, critical that you do different things. You can't use tradition. So, I mean, so we can kind of look at it from a number of perspectives. Let's just kind of go through here. Here's the observations that I've had. Uh, and that's a good one. I'm glad you put that, mentioned that, Amy. Number one, I've been interviewing, and most of you guys know, I, maybe you don't know, I've been an executive recruiter since 1978 to 19 to 2000. Then I got in the dot-com business, and I created a training company. So I've been placing lots and lots of executives. Uh, never reduced my fee. Uh, so I always had to find a top third and not a top 20%. I mean, that was the key. I said, I'll find your top person. If the person's not top, I won't even charge you. Uh, but what I've discovered, if you take the fully qualified people, interviewing, it's very difficult to discern the difference during the interview of what's the top third versus the bottom third. They all look the same. And sometimes I find people who can do the work who don't have all the skills. So when you start looking at who can, when you change the way you even interview, all of a sudden what appears to be the normal interviewing can't differentiate it, and it's hard for managers to do it. So typical interviewing doesn't allow you to differentiate the difference between the bottom third and the top third. They all could be the same, and I'm going to explain this. Use an early bird sourcing strategy. You've got to get to these people as soon as they think they're looking. The first person to get these people, even though they'll compare multiple jobs, they'll get a counteroffer, if you can get them first, you have a better shot at it. 50, 60 percent versus 10 to 20 percent. So I'm going to say the first person who finds the person, if you've got a real career move, got a 60 percent chance of hiring them, and if you're the last person, you've got a 10 percent chance. So you've got to get them first, and I'll explain that to you in a moment. Number two, I don't think, although I truly believe networking is a great technique, and I would think of all the people I've placed in my firm place, 90 percent were networking, 
great advertising can get some people early if you know how to uh, play the game. And this will be applicable to 100K above and, you know, uh, 100K and below as well. And I'll give you a tip on that one. I truly believe you have to eliminate job descriptions. There's not one person in the top third who will look at an ad and say, yes, I want another year of experience doing exactly what I just did. They never say that. So if your job descriptions highlight uh, the skills required to do the work, you're, you're only going after fully qualified people who are desperate. Now that's such an obvious thing, and yet I look at most job descriptions online on most career sites, they, they have a list of skills and qualifications. And there's no person top there who says, yes, I can't wait to do the same work I'm, I'm already doing now. They're looking for growth, they're looking for challenge, they're looking for uh, stretch. And, if you, and you only got 20 seconds to capture their imagination, so put that in the top 20 seconds. I'll give you an example of what I mean by that in a moment. Let's just forget the idea that if you want to go after, certainly if you're going after 100K executives, don't even think about having them apply for jobs. Don't even think about needing a resume. And get, make sure your managers don't even think that way. It will not happen. It starts out with a dialogue and engagement and discussion. Totally different process. Let's just talk about a career opportunity. Now, during that, there are things you can do to get the candidate excited and want, want to get the person to uh, apply, but the purpose, the first contact is a career discussion uh, in comparison to other things the candidate's looking at. Uh, first off, normally if we could go interactive here, I'd say, I'd like you to think about, you might want to think about it for 10 seconds, and I'll put up what I believe to be generally true, is if you could talk to top third people in your company as to why they took a job, and Amy, you might want to kind of uh, mention this in your own, you know, off the top of your head if anybody's putting it in there. If you were to talk to a top third person and said, why did you accept this job at our company? They're very open, very honest. They accepted the offer. They started. You're talking to them on Tuesday or Wednesday of the day they started. You say, hey, what about this job? Uh, got you excited. Why did you accept it? And this is a person who might have multiple opportunities, not somebody who's desperate. So somebody who's got multiple opportunities could choose. So there's a choice. Stay where they are if they were not looking. Uh, or they accepted your job over other jobs. What are some of the criteria you think they might say? Amy, do you want to give that one a shot? You've been yeah, on 250 so, webinars this year. Yeah, sure. So I, I would think that um, one of the first things that uh, a true top performer would pick the job that was that had the most interesting work. That's what I think. Okay, I agree with you. Yeah, so, and, here, Wendy, and Wendy says she thinks it'd be for, for gross opportunities. Yeah, and, I think, and again, I want to talk about the top third. I, uh, and the reason I say the top third is it's very difficult to hire the top 5% all the time. But hiring the top third actually really means you just have to have better processes. I actually believe that's a very possible, uh, we're working with a couple of companies where they're, you have to work hard. It it's not a piece of cake. It's certainly worth it, uh, but it's possible. Hiring the top 5% for everybody, that's not possible. Uh, but here's what I generally find for the challenge, the growth opportunity. They like the work. You said they like. I like being a software developer. I like being a recruiter. I like being an author. I like being uh, a reporter. Whatever the job is, they like the work, and they like it more than uh, the work they're doing. Oh, I do so much administration, feeding my ATS. I just. I'd rather be a real recruiter. I want to be a full sourcer. So I mean, these are reasons why people take the job. Uh, they like the team or the manager. They they feel they can make an impact. They like the culture. They like, I mean, in general, you do, to get the top third, you better be competitive compensation-wise. I don't think you have to be in the top 10%, but you've got to be in the top third. 